You've noticed in the last two nights when we have been talking about health that there are many details that are maybe new for you. There are some of them that may be even controversial for some people. I always recommend people to learn themselves. You look for the information in the same way I look for the information before, but tonight I'm going to tell you some truth about osteoporosis. You may have heard about people saying that the problem with osteoporosis is you don't have enough calcium in your diet. You need to have more calcium in your diet. That's not true. We are going to learn why tonight. All right? So let's start. In the beginning, we are going to learn about the balance of the calcium because we need to be very clear how the body works with the calcium. Calcium is a mineral that is needed for your bones to be strong. The calcium that you eat comes from where? Maybe nuts, maybe beans, maybe green leaf vegetables. Whatever you eat that has calcium, you are eating it because you want to put it in your body. But for that, you have to digest the food, and before, after you digest the food, you have to absorb it. You remember last night we talked about the amount of vitamin D you must have in your body for your intestines to be able to absorb calcium when you eat. And how much was that? 30. I told you that most of the people have a low vitamin D. According to the studies, the level approximately average of people having vitamin D in 2004 was 24. If I take that average study, knowing that it's 24, the vitamin D level of the people, and I know I need 30 to absorb calcium, what is the conclusion? The majority of the population are not absorbing calcium. Doesn't matter how much you pay for food, doesn't matter how much you are chewing your food, if you don't have enough vitamin D, you are not gonna be absorbing that calcium that you are expecting to get into your system. Therefore, tonight we are linking the problem of vitamin D yesterday with the problem of osteoporosis tonight. So number one thing you have to do for your problem of preventing osteoporosis, because you don't want to wait until osteoporosis comes, you want to do it before it comes. I'll tell you beforehand, osteoporosis is approximately a 35 year disease. You will see why. Anything that damage the absorption of the calcium in your intestine is going to be detrimental for your bones, right? Therefore, a lack of vitamin D is going to be detrimental for your bones. Anything that damage the amount of calcium that is in your blood will be detrimental for your bones. Anything that damage the amount of calcium you have in your bones in itself will be detrimental for your bones. In your kidneys, you have to pass all the minerals for filtration. In the way kidney works is this. You pass the blood through a strainer, all the minerals, all the water comes out. Most of it, most of the small molecules, they are coming out, right? After the filtration process, then it comes the reabsorption process, meaning the body is going to pick up what he needs from that filtration. Then after that, what is left is concentrated and you call it now urine. Therefore, you are not just throwing out what is not needed, like if you are in the kitchen throwing what you don't want, no. You filter everything and then after that you have to pick up again. You see the difference? So when your kidney passes all these nutrients in the filtration, you have to pick them up again. In that process, if there is anything that increases your wasting of calcium out, it will be detrimental for your bones. You may be wondering why do we have the blood in the picture because of the balance of calcium. But calcium is used in the blood because when you cut yourself cutting tomato in the kitchen, you don't want to bleed out and you want to coagulate, right? 
Well, calcium is used in the cascade of coagulation. Calcium is used in the contraction of muscles. That may not mean much to you, but if I tell you that your heart is a muscle, then it means something to you, right? You need calcium for your blood, for your muscle in the heart to contract, to work. How much calcium do you need in your blood? You must have always calcium in your blood. How much? Well, according to the numbers, it's 8.4 to 10.4. In medicine, that's what we read. So if I get your blood and I get the measurement, it should be from 8.4 to 10.4. It's like you as the husband, you as the mother in the home need to go out today and you said, for today, I need 500 pesos, right? I need to buy this, I need to buy that. I need 500 pesos to come out of my home. And you take those 500 pesos and you put it in your pocket. You put it in a wallet, whatever it takes. But you take those 500 pesos with you. Question, does that 500 pesos that you have in your pocket, if I put my hand in your pocket and take it out, does that tell me how much money you have at home or in your bank account? That has nothing to do with the amount. You see the point now? I cannot. The point is this. I cannot tell any patient if my blood result is good, that your bank account is good. Why is that important? Because many people believe, going to the doctor, that if the calcium in the blood is a good range, then they don't have osteoporosis. That's not true. You cannot say how much calcium you have in your bones based on the pity catch that you have in your blood. You understand that point? All right. So therefore, because the blood needs to have calcium always, and it cannot tell me what the bone has an amount, we don't rely on the blood for this thing. God made a very useful system to make sure there is always calcium in your blood for all the functions you need. And we cannot take that as a base to diagnose osteoporosis in the bones. Okay, understanding that, we know that blood is not going to be effective in that diagnosis. You have to remember also that if you have good amount of calcium in your bones and your body, good amounts normally should be 99% of the calcium in the bones and the teeth and 1% of the blood. That's what it should be. Now, the problem is that many people have that 1% there, but this one is less. It doesn't matter what you do, how much you calcium, you calcium you eat, how much exercise you do. Your body is going to try to keep the calcium is needed in the blood for all the functions of your body. It is almost impossible to say that we have patients with calcium deficiency in the blood. In the blood, people say sometimes, oh, I have cramps, I have lack of calcium. It's not really true. The most common cause of cramps is lack of magnesium. You see the point? Okay, you're learning those tips now. That's how bones look like when you have osteoporosis. This is a normal bone. And you see that there are more holes. There are more black spots in it because there are more holes into the bones. The more holes, the more brittle. Is like becoming like a chicken bone. There are some people that have so bad osteoporosis that even walk is the, walking, they have a fracture. Is that good? Not good. It's a bad osteoporosis. Don't forget that disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. One of the main causes of osteoporosis in our world today is the excess of sugar consumption in our days. People say, I don't eat too much sugar. That's not true. The average population today is eating 100, some studies say 29, some studies say 149, 129, 149, either one you want to believe, pounds of sugar per person per year in comparison to eight pounds per person per year in the 1800s. Is that a difference? That's a lot of sugar. But that's common. This is average population. Where is that sugar coming from? Most of the time from processed food, 
and the main one is fruit juices. You'll be surprised in the amount of sugar you can find in things. But when you use sugar, you increase in your... Remember the kidney? The kidney filters all the, uh, all the minerals and everything. You excrete more calcium in your kidney, in your urine, when you have 16 teaspoons of sugar in one day, you will increase it 124%. If you add theobromine, which is the cousin of the caffeine that is contained in chocolate, you will increase the excretion of calcium by 147%. So chocolate is not really a good thing, even though it's one of the best anti-inflammatories according to new studies. That doesn't make chocolate a good thing in our bodies. It is causing osteoporosis in the population today. So don't base your love in chocolate. It will get your bones brittle. Now you may ask, how do I know what has 16 teaspoons of sugar? If you eat one, you drink one soda pop, can, whatever you want to call it, these drinks that are called soda, you have 12 teaspoons of sugar in it. If you eat a banana split one day, it is 24 teaspoons of sugar a day. Salt. In reality, salt is not the main problem. The problem is the amount of sodium you eat in your diet. Salt is sodium chloride, which is two elements. Sodium is the problem. Sodium goes into the system. If you eat too much, he is very selfish. Whenever he goes into the kidney, in the same process with all the other nutrients, like magnesium, calcium, and all that, he absorbs the water, holds on to the water, and he basically is saying to the other ones, to the calcium, you go out, I stay. Therefore, if you know that sodium is more powerful to the, take the decision to stay in your body more than the calcium, and you increase the sodium in your diet, what's going to happen with the calcium in your body? The more sodium you eat in your diet, the, more, the worse it will be. Now, what is the problem? You can find sodium chloride sold in many things, but you can find sodium caseinate, which is not sold, as an ingredient in many things. You may find sodium something else, sodium something else in the products, and because it's not sold, they can say salt free. But what is the amount of sodium? You read labels because people are eating too much sodium in the packages today. We have also the deficiency of vitamins and minerals. Yes, we have more osteoporosis when we have deficiency of vitamins and minerals. Anyone? Inactivity, yes, inactivity is contributing to the osteoporotic problem of the population. Why? Because bones are based on vibration. When you walk, your bones feel the vibration. It's like if every cell is saying, there's movement, hold on. We need to be together. When there's no movement, no vibration, they feel like they can relax. They can stay by themselves. So the bones become softer when you don't have vibration, when you don't have exercise. The best exercise is gardening, and the other one is walking. Caffeine, yes, caffeine is also causing more problems in the bone, because it damages it. Excretion of calcium. Caffeine is basically a diuretic. But it's a depleting diuretic, meaning it makes you waste your electrolytes, your minerals. The next one is alcohol. Alcohol is damaging the bones of the people. According to the studies and medicine, we know that if you use alcohol in your young age, the damage from the alcohol, it is not reversible, cannot be reversed, even if you stop drinking alcohol. Then the next one is tobacco. Tobacco is damaging because it is a vasoconstrictor. The nicotine is a vasoconstrictor. Basically, the blood vessels are always decreased. Therefore, the amount of blood that goes to the organs, to the glands, to the bone, to the knees, to the cartilage, it's always less amount of blood because the pipe is always small. There's not much blood going to the system. It's always force. It's back up. Therefore, tobacco will be Another problem for osteoporosis. Acid diet, if you eat too much acid food, which are this, the number one is cheese. Reason why the Lord said never should be in our mouth. Animal protein, yes. 
This is one of the main problems beside vitamin D deficiency, the amount of protein people are eating today. So I'm going to take you now through that experience so you can learn why. Phosphoric acid is another ingredient that is very, very common in beverages, so you have to make sure you are careful on what you read in the ingredients that you are eating in the products. Beverages are loaded with phosphoric acid, so make sure you don't drink those things. Elevated chronic stress has been shown to increase osteoporosis, we know that. And depression, you remember we talk about depression as the definition of health. Depression can lead you to osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can lead you to depression. It's a dual package. Which one do you want to start with? I hope none, right? By God's grace. Medications, yes, there are several medications that will cause osteoporosis in patients, including what? Anticonvulsants, methotrexate, which is a mild chemotherapy drug used in psoriasis in other diseases, heparin, which is used for anticoagulation in some patients. It will cause more osteoporosis in the people. Steroids, those are the number one osteoporosis causing medications. Many people know that. That's good. Conditions that may increase your osteoporosis if you have other diseases, yes. For example, if you have renal failure, of course, if your kidney is not working, filtering all these nutrients, how can you keep the calcium in a good place? So if your kidneys are not working, you're going to have more osteoporosis. What about hyperthyroid? What about hyperparathyroid, diabetes mellitus, multiple myeloma? All these will increase your risk of having osteoporosis. Now get ready because this is the most important part now. Don't go to sleep now. This is revealing the truth to you today. You may have heard, as I said at the beginning, that calcium is not enough. You have to eat more calcium. As a matter of fact, the National Academy of Science says that you should be eating daily 1,000 milligrams of calcium. Then you have the National Institute of Health Osteoporotic Epidemic that says that you should be eating 1,500 milligrams of calcium a day. Then you have the World Health Organization saying that you need to be eating 500 milligrams of calcium a day. Who has the right answer? All right, the reason they don't get into one conclusion and they say one thing or another one, the number one thing is because that is not the problem. Calcium is not the problem. I'm going to show you with some studies that it is not true. Next one. They did a study giving the people 1,400 milligrams of calcium per day. And then they measure the amount of protein they were eating in the day. At the first group, they gave 48 grams of protein and they gave them the 1,400 milligrams of calcium. Remember those numbers and those units and the, so you don't get lost. 1,400 milligrams of calcium, yet 400 grams of, for, 400, no, 48 grams of protein in the diet one day. And what happened with that group? How much was the absorption of calcium in that group? Twenty milligrams from 1,400. It is curing osteoporosis, yes or not? No. You're expecting that you should absorb more than that if you are hoping to reverse osteoporosis using calcium. It's not working. Then the next study, they found that if you have a 95 grams of protein in your diet, you are not actually absorbing calcium. You are losing 30 molecules, 30 milligrams from that, from your bank account. Then you have the next group, 142 grams of protein, and they lost how much? 70 milligrams of calcium. They did not absorb calcium. They actually lost more calcium in their diet, in their bodies. So you can see now that calcium, even though you put many, many, many milligrams of it in the diet, you are not going to be absorbing it. It is almost a waste. You can actually read the percentage of absorption of some of the medication, one of the highest absorbing supplements is like 21%. If you have all the good things in hand, that's not really true for many people. They did another study just to find out if it was really true. 
talking about the um, entelopeptide, and they did the calcium balance. And they found that if you have a protein of 47 grams, and your urine will have approximately 168 milligrams of calcium a day, it is basically a good balance because it's a positive balance. Meaning you are not losing more than what, because remember, calcium is put out in the urine, no matter what, it's part of the function. But when you put too much out of the, the body, then it's a problem. If you are putting out less than 175, it's good. If you're putting more than 175 in the urine out, then it's bad. So if you are having a diet of 47 grams of protein, and you see that your output of urine calcium is 168, is that good or bad? That's good, because it's less than 175, which is, according to the standards, the balance of calcium in the urine. If you have a diet of 95 grams of protein a day, you will be putting out in your urine approximately 240 milligrams of the calcium, which will be a loss, because it should not be more than 175. You're following? Then, if you have a diet of 142 grams, you will be putting out 301, which will be much more higher in the loss of calcium. Therefore, we see the link between the amount of protein people are eating per day with the osteoporotic problem we have. How much protein is good then? If you remember the study, you will say that approximately 50, as a cut line, approximately 50 will not put your kidneys into flushing too much calcium, right? We can safely say that approximately 50 grams of protein a day will be safe for most of the people that will not show up any problems in the kidney, right? Actually, when we talk about history, we find that William C. Rose talk about the use of protein, and he went deeper into the study. You can actually study amino acid, which is the basic parts of the, um, of the protein, and he explained that it's not really the amount of protein what we should be looking at in the problem of osteoporosis. We should be looking at the kind, the proteins that we are eating, what kind of amino acids they have in the diet. There are eight essential amino acids, and he said, as long as you have the eight essential amino acids in your diet, don't worry about the amount of protein, you are eating too much, you only need to live approximately 12.7 grams of protein a day. Now, if you compare that with the study, knowing that 47 grams is like the cut line, let's say 50 grams is the cut line for everybody, no more than 50 grams of protein should be our, in their diet daily. If we need only 12.7, that's very little. Now, how much people are eating today? Do you know? Are we eating 12.7, which is what we need, really? Are we eating 50, which is kind of the cut line? We should not be eating more than 50. How much are we eating? <clears throat> now, let me show you the eight essential amino acids and the amount recommended. Now, you can see the bars there. Those are the colors. You know, if you see them, it's also leucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, all these fancy names for these amino acids. You see them in there? You see the size of the bars, the, how tall they are? That's the amount you need daily of each one of the essential amino acids. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you uh, a slide that will give you the amount of essential amino acid in the foods that you see in the list. Now, if you remember the amount or the recommendation in the bottom line there, you see the amount of the white, you see the amount of the blue, the amount of the red, the amount of the green. Now, think about this list here and see which one is lacking any of the eight essential amino acids. Is anyone lacking does not have the required size, the required amount of eight essential amino acids. All of them have more than what you really need. You see that in the graphic? If you eat one portion of sweet potatoes today, as I did today, you have the eighth essential amino acid, uh, essential amino acid. Meaning, if I eat one portion of sweet potato, I don't need to worry about any more in the protein for my day. You see that? The important thing is the eight essential amino acids, not the amount of protein. 
Now, even though we know now the truth about the proteins, and you can see, next question, which one is from the animal kingdom? None. Because God knew what we needed, and he gave us in the plant diet everything we need. Broccoli and asparagus are one of the best cancer-fighting vegetables after garlic, because garlic is the best. So now that we know this, we will continue with this. This is the average intake of protein in the U.S. today. Somebody take a breakfast. He eats probably a three-egg ham and cheese omelet. That's 46 grams. What do you know now from that first item? If you should not be eating more than 50 grams a day, and you are eating the first item with 46 grams, what does that tell you? You should not be eating anything else for the day that has protein. Almost. You see the point? You're following? Hash brown to, uh, potatoes, three grams of protein. Toast butter jelly, five. Coffee with cream, one. Orange juice, one. Orange? Orange has protein? Yes, it does. Everything in the world has protein. In a measure higher than others. Does rice has protein? Yes. I myself took a picture and I have it in my phone from one of the stores around. Went to the nutritional label of the rice, so you could see it yourself. One cup of rice has nine grams of protein. Nine grams. So you add to your food, mathematically speaking, what, what is the amount you are eating for today. Then this is breakfast. How much? 56, right? Let's go for lunch. Lunch is not a big thing in the U.S. It's a rapid thing. People are running, so they don't eat much, so they go and get a fast food thing, and they eat hamburger, how much? 26, then they eat french fried potatoes, three, milkshake, 11, that's a total of 44 lunch, but like in the Philippines, supper time is a feast. So what happened? This is the big meal, and then what they are eating? Fried chicken, 55, peas, five, Mix salad with dressing, four. Baked potato, at the end, how much is the total? 82 only on the supper time. How much is what you should not be, or what should be eating? Let's say cut off 50, no more than that. We ate already 80 something in the supper today. What is the total? Then we have breakfast 56, lunch 40, dinner 82, total of 170. This is the average consumption of protein in the U.S., reason why we have so many making money dialysis centers today. Maybe they don't have any blame on this. They are trying to help the people, but they have to charge for the amount of expenses they have to go through to try to clean the blood of the people that have kidney failure that has been most of the time, or in many times, because of the amount of protein they are eating in the diet. This is what Atkin diet do for the people, damage the kidneys. Now let's talk about the Bontu family because people have misconceptions about dietary issues. People think that population in Africa, you know, children with skin very close to the bones and big belly is malnutrition. And they don't think about the big, massive people in the U.S. that are malnourished also. Big people, most of the time, are malnourished too. And I can prove you that with tests. We can do, you know, all the kinds of tests you want. Nutrient-based. All the vitamins, minerals, and you measure them, and they are lacking them in their body. Malnutrition is not, or should not be based in the skinny or fatty of the person. <clears throat> the Bontu woman in Africa, she eats approximately 350 milligrams of calcium and 10% of protein because they don't have a diet with so much meat. She has five to 15 children and she has no calcium deficiency. She has no hip fractures. She has strong bones and teeth. According to the institutions, you remember how much they recommended? 
1,000, one of them, 1,500, the other one, and 500 milligrams for the other one in the amount of calcium you should be eating per day. If you base on that, is she nourished or malnourished in the amount of calcium she's taking a day? She's supposed to be malnourished, yet she doesn't have osteoporosis. How can you explain that? Now let me show you the next one. In the next one we have the squamous, which have the high level of activity, 2,000 milligrams to 2,500 milligrams of calcium because in, Africa, in um, Alaska, the U.S. send a lot of supplements for them, so they take a lot of calcium. According to the World Health Organization, they should be based well. They should have no deficiency, yet they have the worst osteoporosis in the world, but the dietary intake of protein is how much? 254 and 400, which is, which is the main source? Which is the worst meat that causes osteoporosis. Did you know that? I told you, you needed to know something new today, and the truth is to be revealed. The worst meat that causes osteoporosis is fish. After that, chicken and turkey. Oh. Go and learn because you're being blind by the enemy and you're getting to osteoporosis. I told you that osteoporosis is basically a 35 year disease. I'm gonna try to be very quick in this. So follow me. You are a child, you eat, you have a growth hormone, the growth hormone produces everything that you can grow, including your bones. Make sure you push calcium in those bones and you have a bank account. It's like me putting a bank account for my son. I put $1,000, 2000 It reached to a million maybe. And when he is 18 years old, I die. And he just go and pull back. When I'm 35 years old, I cannot push calcium that way anymore because my plateau of growth hormone cannot push more calcium in my bones anymore. I depend from then on on the amount of vitamin D I have and the amount of calcium I'm eating in my diet and if I am not doing things that will flush my calcium out. You see the point now? From my 35 years old, which I passed already, I'm 38, I am starting to either keep my calcium or asking loans from the bone. If my son doesn't work, he keep pulling the bank account, what will happen one day? Walang pera. Right? If there is no money, he's not working, osteoporosis comes. Then you have 35 years asking loans when you are 55, 65 years old. You have your first hip fracture. You have osteoporosis diagnosed by the doctor. And according to the study, one year and a half after, you are dead. This is the reality of the world today. Open your eyes, study, don't eat too much protein. It's damaging the people. You go online, you can find this, or you can ask me later, I can give you the link. This is one of the best documents I've found in the US from the US Agriculture Department. They tell you how much protein you have in everything, even apple, even alcohol. They measure everything to tell you how much protein, and I'll give you one. Salmon, one half fillet, half, half a fillet, has 42 grams of protein. One half slice of fillet. How many of you will eat only half a fillet of salmon in one eating? <laughs> 